This is where the outhouse is going today, thanks to Dirty Boys Construction in Fairbanks, Alaska. They are graciously putting this hole in. They were doing some work right across the street. They do a different um, variety of things here, and they are nice enough and offered to come over and dig our hole because the ground's still frozen so that we can build the outhouse today. And this is what the Golden Heart City is all about. People here are incredible, and we are so thankful for this fine work coming in here and put in a nice beautiful hole that we are going to set an outhouse on top of today because you need somewhere to poop and we don't have a septic system yet but I think when that time comes and my parents are ready to put in their septic we're definitely going to be giving them a call if you have any needs I highly recommend them they're incredibly nice we're really really grateful Before the hole was finished, they offered to let our oldest son give it a try, so he's getting his instructions right now. Let's see how he does. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Look at that! <laughs> it's alright if you take out some trees, bud. Alright, buddy. There you go. <laughs> wow! He's like, I just gotta figure out those controls. <laughs> okay, so he was kind enough to let our oldest give it a shot, so he just scooped out a scoop and he's now emptying it. Oh, he's learning how to do it more smoothly. <laughs> so now it's the younger kiddo's turn, so he's gonna get his instructions of how to operate the bucket. Oh, there he goes. take out some trees that's okay we said they're fine if they go oh he's gonna go over it or is he gonna go under it oh there you go he's figuring it out look at that and he's gonna give it his best shot for a scoop he's gonna line it up though Carter started lined up Kim is lining it up by himself <laughs> Literally from like 20 feet in the sky. Yeah, right. 20 feet in the sky, and then it was a bunch of dirt. Look at Camden go. There we go. It's crazy. The dirt's so dense that it lifts up the whole thing. He said it's still frozen, like several inches in. So that's why they had to bring like a different digger machinery because um, it's still very frozen. See, you said we weren't going to be uh, shoveling through nothing. <laughs> Kevin's going to go for it. There he goes. All right, he's taking lift off. 
And now he's gonna move it. Let's see how he does. Oh, nice and smooth. Did he take out the tree? We'll see. What about the outhouse? Oh, not bad. Look at that, he's going over it. Okay, he's going around. Is he gonna dump? Oh, oh, he stopped on time, okay. Now he's gotta, oh, there he goes. Good job, bud. Yeah. Now that you saw our outhouse hole get dug open, we are starting to put together the frame of the outhouse, the foundation. And so we're uh, just kind of making it up, but leaving the space open so that it has access to the hole. We start with the foundation by attaching the blocking with really long screws, multiple of them to make sure that it's nice and sturdy, and then we'll move it into place here shortly. So this piece here is one that we got in a trade, rather, for um, um, getting rid of the wood-fired cook stove. They brought this and we traded out with them for a smaller piece. And honestly, we figured we could just find some random stuff around this cabin for the flooring. And that's what we did. So now we're gonna cut that. Um, it is up here to cover a hole in this deck that uh, developed over the winter. So here we go. Now that we cut the plywood, we're laying it on top of the frame for the foundation and attaching it with a nail gun. Now that the base is on, time to start fitting the walls. Just to make sure. Yeah, we're gonna have this wrapped up by lunch. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a plan comes together. perfect to me. Okay, so we did account for that. Yep. <gasps> Thank God! Holy shit, it's like we knew what we were doing. <laughs> well, it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this guy right here. This one. Next up is cutting the hole for access for the poop and pee to go into the big hole. Yay! Boy, boy! We might need that, so don't go too far with it. We don't know what we're doing and what we need. Okay. He doesn't even question us. He's like, sounds about right. Next up is installing the side wall. So we're just going to attach it at first using the nail gun. For additional reinforcement, we also screwed it as well, just to make it a little more difficult. We essentially repeated the process with the back wall and then the other side wall by attaching it with a nail gun as well as screws. And it's really starting to take shape and come together really nicely. Let's see how the rest goes. While Cameron was finishing screwing those on, I was grabbing the front portion and starting to frame that up. After some encouraging words from my oldest son on our progress, it was an all hands on deck while we were starting to attach the frames in the front, which were a little bit tricky. It was mainly tricky because these boards were pretty warped, so trying to get it to set flush and flat and level and everything else was a little bit difficult, but we managed to work it out together and get it attached so we could move on installing the roof, 
which you're about to see here in just a moment. So we don't have a ladder with us, but we do have this table that I pulled out of the uh, cabin that we're no longer using. This is the original kitchen. You're looking at it. Now I'm going to use it as a ladder. See if it holds. Oh, you, you've been standing on oh it. yeah. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. You know, it worked after all, and I was able to get it up just fine. Let's see how the rest comes together. Next up is installing the rafters. That proved a little challenging because my table was a little short, and I might have had a little oopsie doopsies that you're about to see. Even though a majority of our tools are out at our cabin and not with us, and since we've had to get extra things to complete this project, luckily that included another drill, so I was able to use a dry one and carry on to the backside and finish attaching these rafters. Maybe the table wasn't the best idea, but it's still working out. Next up, we begin installing the seat base. For some reason, I don't know why, it's, yeah, it's off a little bit, so we're adapting and improvising over here, and we're just making it fit our cuts, which those were accurate, so I don't really know what's happened with that, but anyways, we just say we're just moving the boards in a little bit, and because we have these big old screws, we're able to do that without having it against the other edge to catch it so what are we doing? you just have to adapt improvise and overcome and make it work so that's what we do to install the seat base we had already pre-cut everything which is why we had to make adjustments to make it fit but after installing the boards across the front we have to install the ones into the back Next up is the tricky part, installing the siding. It was a little challenging trying to lift it up and hold it in place so that's also straight and level. I thought it would be easier to end up tracing where it fell and then making the cut and installing it. And it worked out really well. It was just challenging to have them hold it up there in place, which is why we needed two people to do that portion while I was tracing. But we did that with all of the sides and it worked out great. As you can see, after we finished that side, we moved on to the back. It was a little bit more tricky because we had to notch out around the rafters. So that just involved a little bit of trial and error to get it perfect fit, but we got it pretty well. And once we did that, we moved on to the last side, which also went pretty smoothly as well. Before I could do the next side, I did need to do some landscaping. Isn't this how everybody does it? But now you're all dirty. It's okay. It's okay. Is this how you landscape too? Um, when have I landscaped? <laughs> Gotta say, I probably well, never well, landscaped. At the conclusion of my amazing landscaping, I was able to get both men over here to hold it up, lift it so it looked le relatively level, and then trace where it fell so we could make that cut as you're about to see, and then hold it back up, get it lined up again, and attaching it using the nail gun. So initially we did nails, and then we did go behind and do um, screws as well for um, just some added stability as the nails kind of wanted to pull out just a little bit with the tension um, but it worked out really well super quick and easy 
as you can imagine, we did exactly the same thing with the door. We held it up against the frame from the inside. I traced exactly where the door frame went so that we could cut it out. And then in theory, we'll be reusing this cut piece for the door once we get it out and it should fill in that space pretty perfectly. And this just helped us not have to piece together um, several different sections. Worked out great. Once it was cut, we were able to put it on to the frame. So we installed the seat base right here using not what you're necessarily supposed to use. It was just a leftover piece, um, but we still made it work and it's really sturdy because it has all the other support beams. And then my kids found this toilet seat they might've seen earlier uh, in one of the sheds around here. So we're using that right now as a template to draw where the hole is going to be that we're going to cut out. So when we install a new one, we'll have a perfect hole below. So that's what I'm going to do. And you know, eyeballing it looks pretty good to me. Alright, and now we're going to use the jig and take it out. It's hammer time! <laughs> As you could see, with some amazing assistance, we were able to cut that hole pretty smoothly, and then we moved on to the roofing. That was another slight challenge. This table was a little short so that I could be, um, you know, coming from on top of the support that I was installing, but I was installing these little tiny supports that you can see. They probably have a name. They have little edges in them for the panel to sit on top, so that was the first step. Once those little cross support pieces were installed on top of the rafters, I was able to put on the plastic with the help of my husband. So this is the corrugated roofing. We chose clear once again to let in the daylight so that we don't need a light. Since there's no power out to the outhouse, um, it holds up pretty well. So we are taking exactly the same approach and We'll see how it fares in the winter because this does have a longer overhang on the front and the back. And if it ends up crumbling in, we'll just do it all over again. Not a big deal. Here it is. It's mostly complete. I forgot the hinges at home, so we'll install the door another day. Um, but overall, we made this little... <laughs> Um, a little deck because it's a little squishy from getting the hole dug. But there you go. There's the outhouse. Take a look at the sides. We went with the clear so that they can let in some daylight and have some light. We'll see how well it holds up. Not too confident in that. I mean, it's pretty similar to exactly what we did with ours at our cabin um but using those little wood things but they split as soon as you screw into them so we'll see how it holds up over time not the biggest deal to have to replace the roof but it's cute today i finished the final touches on the outhouse sure yeah absolutely not perfect Kind of throwing it together because my mom's about to be here soon. However, it functions, it works. You got a toilet seat. Woohoo! Got a latch for the inside. Is it pretty? No. But does it work? Yeah. And that's important. Also, I had to do this all myself trying to balance this up here. So that's why it's not exactly straight square you name it but it's done it's got a little walkway in case it's wet it's perfect <laughs>